In countries like the USA, terms like Caucasian are often used to refer to white people no matter their background. Whether they are of English descent, Polish descent, or are from Georgia, the term Caucasian refers to anybody considered white, even though the Georgian is the only one in this group that is actually from the Caucasus. Terms like Caucasoid were historically used to refer to peoples of the world that showed signs of a proposed shared ancestry. The Caucasian race or Europoid referred to groups in Europe, Asia, North Africa, and the Horn region of Africa. This classification was based on skull shape and shared characteristics. Many anthropologists considered South Asians, Indians, Caucasians due to these traits believing that millions of South Asian people were quote-unquote Aryan people. I mean, if you just look at a photo of an albino Indian person, you can easily see the European features. Are Indians Caucasians or Caucasoids? Is this completely false, or is there a deeper, more nuanced conversation to be had about this topic? What is a Caucasian skull? Well, according to scientist Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, who is considered the founder of racial categorizations, Caucasoid skulls have a thin nasal aperture, which means a narrow nose, a small mouth, a facial angle of 100 to 90 degrees, and an orthonathism, which means having normally aligned jaws and a vertical facial profile. The racial categories of anthropology in the 1800s and early 1900s were mostly centered around three categories, Caucasoid, Negroid, and Mongoloid. So would Indians fall into this Caucasoid category? Well, many of these early anthropologists that believed in these races put Indians in this category of Caucasian because of resemblances between Indians and other West Asians, North Africans, and Europeans. The Indian argument is based on these physical similarities, but also based on the largest language family in the Indian subcontinent, which is the Indo-Aryan languages, a part of the larger Indo-European language family. The Indo-European language family originates in the Pontic Caspian steppe, and with the spread of the Western steppe herders, the Yamnaya culture, the Indo-Europeans, came the spread of their languages, their beliefs, and their genes. This Indo-European ancestry is seen all throughout Europe, but is also seen in South Asia and the Middle East due to the fact that Indo-European descendant groups entered those regions thousands of years ago, bringing their language and parts of their culture. Majority of the languages in the northern half of the Indian subcontinent are Indo-Aryan. Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, Gujarati, Marathi, these are all just a few of the dozens of Indo-Aryan languages in South Asia. There is also the Iranian languages, which are also part of the Indo-European language family. Languages like Pashto, Farsi, Kurdish, Tajik, and also the Nuristani branch, which only consists of a few languages, one including Kalasha, the language of the Kalash people, who, contrary to popular belief, are not descendants of Greek soldiers. So sorry if this is how you find out. Due to this link between South Asia and Europe, many people made the claim that Indians are Caucasoids. If you look at a North Indian Punjabi or a Patan, you can understand why people claim that they are Caucasian. The skull shape is not too far from a European. But let me break down the ancestry of South Asians so we can understand how Caucasian the ancestry truly is. I've talked about South Asian ancestry in multiple videos in the past, but check this one out as I go very in depth on the ancestry of the people of the Indian subcontinent. But here I will do a very quick summary. South Asian DNA is broken down into two large components, East Eurasian DNA and West Eurasian DNA. East Eurasian DNA is mostly from a group called the AASI, aka Ancient Ancestral South Indian, also known as the South Asian hunter-gatherers, who entered the region around 40 to 60,000 years ago. There's also other East Eurasian components from East or Southeast Asia, which is seen in Northeast Indian subcontinental people, as well as people along the Himalayan mountain range. This DNA can be seen in Tibeto-Burman speakers, Austroasiatic speakers, but also groups like Bengalis, Assamese, and Nepalese groups. The second largest DNA component is West Eurasian DNA, which will be the focus for this video. West Eurasian DNA in South Asians are mainly comprised of two ancestral populations. One is the Iranian hunter-gatherers who entered South Asia around 10,000 years ago, the second being Western steppe herder descendant populations aka the Indo-Aryans who entered South Asia around 3,500 years ago. 
West Eurasian populations developed in the western region of Eurasia and share a common ancestor dozens of thousands of years ago in the Middle East. Populations like the Western hunter-gatherer, Anatolian hunter-gatherer, Iranian hunter-gatherer are all West Eurasian populations and these ancestries are spread throughout Europe and South Asia. European ancestry being a result of mixing of Western hunter-gatherer, Anatolian Neolithic farmer, and Western steppe herders, and Western steppe herders themselves were a mix of Eastern hunter-gatherer and Caucasus hunter-gatherer. In South Asians, West Eurasian DNA is mostly comprised of Iranian hunter-gatherer and Western steppe herder DNA. These groups are all related if you go back far enough and have characteristic similarities because they all come from the same region. These traits are lighter skin and having a skin tone from brownish to pale white as well as narrower noses, hairier bodies, and wavy to straight hair. These West Eurasian groups in the subcontinent are, for the most part, responsible for lighter skin in South Asia, and we see rates of these ancestries throughout South Asia, the ancestries coming from the AASI, Iranian hunter-gatherer, and the Indo-Aryans. I made a video recently about the ancestral differences between South and North Indians in terms of their AASI, Iranian hunter-gatherer, and Aryan DNA. You can check that out here. But what we see is North Indians usually have more West Eurasian DNA because this is the general area that West Eurasian DNA entered the region. This shared West Eurasian DNA is why South Asians will have similar features to some Middle Eastern groups or European people. This shared ancestry, however, goes back dozens of thousands of years, like I mentioned. It is not recent at all. Because of this, the average South Asian is almost as closely related to Australian Aboriginals, Papuans, East Asians, or Negritos than they are to Europeans, because these groups that I mentioned are East Eurasian. Most of the time when we talk about Indians being quote-unquote Caucasian, we are talking about North Indian groups like Punjabis or Kashmiris, but Caucasian is not the right term at all. The Caucasian race or Caucasoid people have been debunked now for decades and these terms are not taken serious at all in academic anthropological circles because it was part of the belief in biological race, which basically was the belief that race was a biological phenomenon rather than a social phenomenon. Yes, your characteristics, your traits are passed on biologically, but the idea of race itself is social. I made a video about this topic as well. Indians are not Caucasian because they don't share a common ancestor in the Caucasus for the most part. Yes, there is a small Caucasian genetic component through Caucasus hunter-gatherers, but this would be very, very little. But this is with most of the ancestry in most West Eurasian groups. These genetic and phenotypic similarities are due to common ancestry in ancient West Eurasian populations in the Middle East as far back as 40,000 years ago. Many of these ancestral West Eurasian groups that stayed in the general area of West Eurasia for thousands of years, developing similar traits because of environment. Unfortunately, I still see many people claim that Indians are Caucasians, that they are racially identified as Caucasoids, but that is very incorrect. This categorization is only based on phenotype, meaning how people look, not an ancestral Caucasian group that is ancestral to Indians and Europeans, forming the majority of their DNA. This further proves that race is socially constructed based on how groups look. Many people politicize this claim of Indians being Aryan Caucasoids, and that's why you might see many Indian neo-Nazis on Twitter. Race realism is very much debunked. Scientific racism was a pseudoscience, however, this does not mean that race doesn't impact people's lives. There was actually a quite famous case in 1923 when Bhagat Singh Tind, a Punjabi Sikh man, claimed he was Aryan, a Caucasian, to the Supreme Court of the USA because he was ineligible for naturalized citizenship as they did not see him as white. He made the claim that he was white, but he did not get citizenship as the court unanimously rejected his argument, adding that he did not meet any quote-unquote common sense definition of white, ruling that he couldn't become a naturalized citizen. The court concluded that the term Aryan has to do with linguistic and not at all with physical characteristics, and it would seem reasonably clear that mere resemblances in language indicating a common linguistic root buried in remotely ancient soil is altogether inadequate to prove racial origin. Mind you, this is at a time when they still believed race was biological, yet they contradicted themselves by claiming there is a quote-unquote common sense definition of white, implying whiteness is social. At this time, anthropologists still claimed Punjabis were Caucasian, but obviously this didn't matter to the court. So to wrap things up, 
The question of whether Indians are Caucasian isn't as straightforward as old anthropologists once made it out to be. The term itself is outdated, rooted in pseudoscience and racial classifications that have long been debunked. While South Asians do share common ancestry with other West Eurasian groups, those connections go back tens of thousands of years and don't make modern Indians Caucasian in any meaningful sense. Race, as we've seen, is socially constructed. And these labels tell us more about history, politics, and power than they do about biology. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe for more videos about sociology, anthropology, and genetics.